let's talk about the energy of roasting and brewing. And uh, as far as background on energy, let's talk about the two main types of energy. Those are potential energy and kinetic energy. And potential energy is energy of position. Energy of position means that just by things having positions, there is a, an energy, a potential between them. And one thing that, or two objects that have, oops, that's a minus sign, that have potential energy between them are charges. We know that there's an attraction between oppositely charged items. And that attraction depends upon each of the items' exact positions. So here, they have a different potential energy than here. That's potential energy, energy of position. We can also imagine that if we had two positive charges, those two positive charges would repel each other. And uh, this works for magnets as well. If you ever try and bring two magnets together in a certain position, they can be attracted or repelled depending upon how you hold them. And you can feel the energy of the position between them, similar for charges. Now, potential energy, uh, another two objects that have potential energy between them would be any ball and the earth or anything in the earth. And we're gonna imagine a ball here at the top of a cliff or at the top of a table. This object has potential energy according to how much mass it has. And we're gonna use M for mass, Ma M equals mass. And it will turn out to be important that the mass has units of kilograms. So I'm gonna write in kilograms. Then another factor that will be important is the height of that mass. Height will be H. And it will turn out that to be important for the height to be in units of meters, lowercase m. And it turns out that you can calculate the potential energy between this ball that, or this ball uh, at, that it has above a height from another surface by using the equation PE, which stands for potential energy, equals MGH. Mass times gravity times height. G is gravity that is attracting this ball towards the center of the Earth. And really, the ball is attracted to the Earth itself. And G is the gravitational constant. And it is equal to uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we are to imagine that uh, this ball has uh, a mass of, let's say, 5 kilograms, where that will be our mass, we know our gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a point there. And let's suppose that it is one meter above a surface. So one meter is approximately the length of an arm. And it's approximately, although may not be exactly the same, the distance between uh, the table or desk that you're sitting at and the floor. Mm, close enough. Plugging these numbers in, we get 5 times 9.8 times 1. I get 49. And none of our units cancel out here. We get meter squared because there's a meter in the gravitational constant and there's a meter in the height divided by second squared, which is definitely a strange unit. And that's why scientists have defined uh, one kilogram meter squared per second squared 
as something called one joule. And we'll get a little bit of an idea about what a joule is. Joule was a famous scientist. Now, um, but let's see. So one joule. So this is also equal to 49 joules. And I'll use capital J for joules. And we'll see joules throughout the rest of the talk as well. Okay. So... Let's do a slide. So I, I, I have a hard time with what a joule is. Let's investigate a little bit more about what a joule is. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar calculation here, except that we're going to have our potential energy set to one joule. We're going to know that gravity is a constant on Earth. It is always the same constant. If you go to the moon, yes, you'll have a different number. And let's assume that it's one meter. So that's about the distance, again, from uh, the table that I'm sitting at to the floor. Well, I guess it's about 30 inches, 30, yeah, it's a little less, but ballpark. So I'm going to do this calculation. I'm going to do potential energy. Equals MGH. And this time I'm going to put in one joule. I'm not going to put in for the mass. Let's solve for the mass. I'm going to put in my 9.8 meters per second squared and one meter. So, um, and then we'll solve for the mass. In order to do this, uh, for this equation, I've got to divide both sides by one, which I don't have to do, but I, I do have to do it, divide by 9.8. And if I get this mass, it's going to be, so that cancels, um, that's just 1, and I get mass equals 1 divided by 9.8. Well, I'll make my units cancel out nicely here. I'll divide both by 1 meter as well. Sorry, it gets a little sloppy there. So that my answer will be in terms of just meters. Uh, or sorry, mass in kilograms, and it will be 1 divided by 9.8 equals 0 0.102 kilograms. And my scale reads in grams. Our scales read in grams. So about 102 grams. So if we drop something that is 102 grams from a height of about one meter, that is the potential energy stored that is equal to one joule. Now, let's see. I have my scale here. Let's see if I have anything that is equal to about 102 uh, joules or uh, grams. So I just so happen to have, uh, I don't think you can quite see that. There you go. I have a big and a cherry tomato that are almost exactly, well now it's telling me it's exactly 102 grams. Uh, I will not be dropping these because this is going to be in my dinner tonight. I also have, let's see, I have my calculator, which is 77 grams. And if I put my two pens here, will that do it? Not quite. I do have my glasses I can put on this as well. 102.7. So if I were to drop my calculator and my glasses from a height of one meter, or if I were to hold them there, that's what I should say. If I hold them there, then that has a potential energy of one joule. So that's a little bit about potential energy. And I do want you to write down of the two things that I said, which was your favorite set of things that has one joule of energy.